Keeping you up to date on breaking news, we've been following this morning Fond du Lac firefighters on the scene of a tavern fire. We want to show you some photos. You can see it's been a really intense fire. Fond du Lac police and fire crews have been posting pictures of what's happening on Twitter. It's the Wayside Tavern on West Division Street, just west of downtown. They tell us the fire broke out just before 5 this morning. And Kristen Allen is live there with what's happening right now. Smoke is still pouring out of the Wayside Tavern here behind me. I'm told that it was a very popular spot in the city for fish fries. Up above was an apartment, but that has been vacant for some time, so no one was injured in the fire. The fire happened about 20 to 5 this morning, and no one was injured in the fire. I'm joined by Division Chief Troy Hazy this morning. Good morning, Troy. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, tell us just a little bit about what you guys are doing right now. Right now, we're, we, the fire started initially and was heavily involved when we got in scene, so we went to a defensive attack. So right now, we're trying to, of course, attack the fire from the outside. I think the majority of the fire has been knocked down, and we're working on getting the hot spots. And what will your next steps be, you know, once the hot spots are out and you guys have things, you know, more contained this morning? Once we get it uh, under control and we have the fire out and it's safe to get inside, we'll, uh, the police department and the fire department will get inside and do a fire investigation as well. Uh, tell us about uh, the building. Uh, is it it's destroyed, right? Yeah, it looks like it's a total loss. Um, I'm not sure that you know. Basically, it will be um, a water damage issue on the lower half. Looks like the top half is basically burned off the top of the building. And you said that this uh, this is a very popular spot for fish fries. So, uh, kind of a loss to the community in that aspect. Absolutely. I talked to the owner a little bit. He said he had canceled the fish already today for Friday. It's one of those places that if you're going to go out for fish, this is one of the better places in town. And this is Division Street. It's blocked off um, this this segment of it, uh, the 200 block. How how long do you expect that to be closed yet still this morning? I would expect we're going to be closed down for the next couple hours at least until we can get this uh, cleaned up. We have a lot of firefighters from uh, all area here. All right, Troy, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be here for the next little bit, and we'll keep you posted on any developments with this fire. Reporting live in Fond du Lac, Kristen Allen, Action 2 News. Kristen, thanks. 603 now. We've been following developing news overnight out of the south. Look at this video. The National Weather Service says at least nine tornadoes have hit southeast Louisiana, southwestern Mississippi. Look at this. One storm ripped the roof and wall off a gym in Louisiana. At least two people died when one twister slammed into an RV park in Louisiana. A third person died after possible tornado in Purvis, Mississippi, and storms also hit Florida and Alabama. Police in our area say they're seeing a dangerous trend of drunk driving incidents over the last few Days. The Brown County OWI task force deployed in De Pere Saturday night. In just five hours, officers arrested seven drunk drivers. Three of those were second time offenders. Yesterday morning, Green Bay police arrested a man named Patrick Moore, who officers say was driving drunk and was caught for the 12th time. Police say they are noticing more repeat drunk drivers continuing to get behind the wheel. If you look back and look at the trend, it's a second, third, and fourth, of fifth, fifth offense people that is really bothering us that have been arrested by the task force over the years, know what we're about, know what the whole program is about, but yet you turn around and go out and do the same thing. Last year, Green Bay reported 642 OWI arrests. 222 of those were repeat offenders. Overnight news we're following this morning. A missing person in Menasha has been found. The police department found 55-year-old Janice Reitzner safe. We don't have many more details. She had been missing since Sunday afternoon. A Green Bay man has been charged with possessing child pornography after police found tens of thousands of files at his home. 41-year-old Scott Murray now faces 10 felony counts, each carrying a maximum of 25 years in prison if he's convicted. Investigators say they zeroed in on Murray's computer back in September after linking it to a batch of files downloaded online. When questioned by police, court documents indicate Murray claimed he was part of an organization that helped abuse children, and he got curious about how easy it would be to find images. Investigators say he directed them to a portable hard drive, which initially showed approximately 20,000 images and videos of child pornography. 605 right now is good news for the Eagle Tower in Door County. The Wisconsin DNR hopes to have it back open next year after some rebuilding. The tower in Peninsula State Park has been closed for almost a year. Parts of it deteriorated and it wasn't structurally sound. DNR says project costs still have to be finalized. The group called Door Property Owners has been fighting to save this tower and their online petition got more than 1,700 signatures, all from people who believe the tower is a landmark. It is such 
um, a fantastic feature in our county. It is historically, educationally, and um, economically important to us. We've all been going there since we were little. The tower needs to be temporarily taken down to examine how much of that original wood can be used during restoration. 606 right now, 32 degrees. Tonight, the Oshkosh School Board will review and vote on proposed cuts that will happen if voters don't approve a referendum in April. A committee made up of staff members and community members developed a list of recommended budget cuts if the referendum does not pass. The list of potential cuts totals nearly $3.5 million for next school year and $4 million for the following year. Right now, some of the major proposed cuts include closing one of the district's five middle schools and freezing teacher wages. Other cuts would target athletics by combining teams, including the football team, from Oshkosh North and Oshkosh West high schools. The superintendent says classes with lower enrollment would also be eliminated. The biggest issue is we would destroy high quality two high schools uh, that uh, presently um, operate with um, uh, a uh, very high 92-93% uh, uh, four-year graduation rate, uh, have ACT scores that compete extremely well in the Fox Valley as well as across the state. Oshkosh's referendum, called the Referendum for Learning, would provide $4 million per year for seven years to protect academic programs. The Oshkosh School District says if you own a home worth $100,000, the property tax impact would be less than $7. And we'll be following that on Action 2 News coming up tonight. We are in the middle of a sunshine shortage. Continued cloudy on your Wednesday first forecast with maybe a few flurries or a light snow shower this afternoon and evening. Our high up to 30. It's going to feel colder though with blustery north winds picking up as the day moves on. And perhaps the best news of all is that freezing fog should not be an issue as we go into our morning drive. Yes, it's a little hazy out there, but visibility is between two and six miles in the valley shouldn't really cause too many problems. Visibilities are a little bit better compared to yesterday with temperatures that are a little bit milder than yesterday. Right around freezing 32 in Green Bay, Oshkosh 33 degrees in Wapaka. Now in the north, the air is relatively calm, but from Green Bay and south and along the lakeshore, a uh, north to northeast wind is starting to pick up in speed around 10 to 15 miles an hour. And it's going to get stronger because of a winter storm passing by to our south and east. Look at all the heavy snow on the satellite and radar view from St. Louis towards Detroit. And that is going to be spreading into lower Michigan. Not a direct hit for us. But if you're traveling south and east, oh boy, here's pinpoint predictor with the snowfall totals. See that purple stripe from downstate Illinois into northern Indiana and into central lower Michigan. It's in that band. You're looking at about six to as much as 12 inches of snowfall in most areas. Now we're not going to get too much snow. We're going to get a lot of wind. However, as the storm system passes by to our south and east, look for a gusty north wind through the midday in the afternoon. Now sustained speeds will be around 20 miles an hour, but some of the gusts will be up around 25 or 30 miles an hour. High temperatures today should be mainly in the mid 30s. Let's go with 36 today in Pembine, 36 also for Oshkosh and for Fond du Lac with that stubborn gray cloud cover on predictor. Maybe during the afternoon and evening hours, there could be a few flurries or a light snow shower that pops up in the Fox Valley and towards the lakeshore. But the bulk of the snow, the heavy wet snow, will be in lower Michigan and staying on the other side of Lake Michigan uh, through tonight. I wouldn't be shocked if some folks lakeside see a dusting through tonight, but that's probably the extent of it as far as snow accumulation is concerned. Your severe weather outlook is very low for the next several days. We'll have to keep an eye on early next week, Sunday going into Monday. We may see some rain and then some light accumulating snow. Right now, 32 degrees in Green Bay. Feels like 24 with a brisk northeast wind at 10 miles an hour. We have overcast skies. It's going to stay cloudy today and it will turn blustery with a high of 36. There's a chance of an afternoon flurry or snow shower, especially the farther east you live. Tonight, cloudy and windy with a few lake flakes, low temperature of 26. And here's the seven day forecast. Now that blustery wind is going to bring our temperatures down a little bit. Tomorrow and Friday highs will be around or just a hair above 30. We climb back to the low 40s on Saturday with a breezy west wind. And then there's another cool down early next week. Sunday and Monday we'll have some rain switching over to some snow as that cool air moves in as we begin next week and as we wrap up February and start to work our way into March. Mm -hmm. It's coming very quickly. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Steve.
Welcome back. Time saver traffic 618 on this Wednesday morning. It's a good morning so far. You can see green traffic flows in the Oshkosh area and the Fond du Lac areas. We're not getting any reports of significant uh, slowdowns this morning. Let's take a look at drive times right now on 43 on the Lakeshore between 172 in Bellevue and the Manitowoc area, a little less than half an hour both directions. 43 between Manitowoc and Sheboygan also looking good about 20 minutes whether you're headed north or south. Good Wednesday morning. Now, yesterday we started off with some freezing fog, and while that caused some travel issues, it did leave some scenic wonder, winter wonderland uh, views across northeast Wisconsin. We got some great pictures on Facebook and on Twitter of either hoarfrost or rime ice, depending on which neighborhood you're watching us from. Uh, this beautiful view here from uh, Michelle Borley in Dykesville of some of the hoarfrost on some of the uh, bushes in her uh, property. And this is rime ice from Courtney Hayes. Beautiful icy trees there on that very scenic path. So thanks for sending those in. Next 24 hours, freezing fog really shouldn't be an issue this morning. Cloudy, turning blustery with perhaps a few afternoon and evening flurries or maybe a light snow shower. High of 36, blustery winds will bring the temperatures down into the lower 30s for highs Thursday and Friday, but we spike back up to 43 with some sun as we go into Saturday. Catherine and Tammy. Steve, thanks. Breaking news this morning. We're live on the scene of a fire that has destroyed a tavern in Fond du Lac. No one hurt. Kristen Allen has a full report next. We've been following breaking news all morning. A fire has destroyed a tavern in Fond du Lac. Thanks for joining us. I'm Catherine Bracho. And I'm Tammy Elliott. Kevin is off today. This tavern is on West Division Street. Take a look at these pictures. You can see it's been a really intense fire out there. Now, Fond du Lac police and firefighters have been posting pictures of the fire on Twitter. This is the Wayside Tavern just west of downtown. Town. Our Kristen Allen is live there with what's happening right now. Smoke is still pouring out of the Wayside Tavern here behind me. You can see there are several fire departments on scene here. An Alliant Energy truck just pulled up. They did previously shut off power to the building, but Alliant Energy is going up there. They're going to be working on the transformer. Now, I'm told that the Wayside Tavern was a pretty popular spot for Friday night fish fries. Up above it, there was an apartment, but that had been vacant for some time, so no one was inside when the fire started. No one was hurt. No firefighters. Uh, have been hurt either. The Fond du Lac Fire Department tells me that the building is destroyed. Right now they are working on getting out those hot spots. The next step after that will be going inside to try to determine what may have caused this fire and where it started in the building. The division chief with the Fond du Lac Fire Department told me that he did speak to the owner of this business who says as far as he knows, everything inside was working properly, so no clues yet as to where this fire may have started inside the building. We're on the 200 block of Division Street right now, and it is estimated that this will probably be closed for a few hours yet this morning. Reporting live in Fond du Lac, Kristen Allen, Action 2 News. Welcome back, 643. We've been following breaking news all morning. A fire destroys a tavern in Fond du Lac, which holds a popular place for Friday fish fries. And fire crews have been out there for about two hours now. And our Kristen Allen is live there with what What's happening right now? Fire crews are still working on putting out hot spots here at the Wayside Tavern behind me. There was still a little bit of smoke coming from the building, but not nearly what there was earlier this morning. Now as the sun is up and the smoke has dissipated, we're getting a better look and you can see uh, basically uh, just the frame, not much left to the top of the building. I'm told that the Wayside Tavern was a pretty popular restaurant and bar for Friday night fish fries. Up above, there was an apartment unit that had been vacant for some time, so no one was inside when the fire started and no one was injured. The Fond du Lac Fire Department says that when they got here early this morning, the building was on fire and they could see flames coming from it. Apartment part of the building upper upper second floor was uh, fire coming out of all the windows and doors. So it was pretty much a uh, uh, defensive attack from the beginning. I know we made try to get around the outside to make sure everybody was out of the building. Once they get these hot spots out, they'll then move into the investigation portion. This morning, they'll be going inside to try to determine what may have caused this fire. So far, they don't have any ideas. The Fond du Lac Fire Department did speak with the owner of this business who says that as far as he knows, everything inside was working properly. So no clues yet as to what may have sparked this fire. Now, this is on the 200 block of Division Street, and this portion is expected to be closed for several hours still this morning. Reporting live in Fond du Lac. Kristen Allen, Action 2 News.